<laughs> and we're live. And we're live. We're live. Oh, hi. How you doing? Hi. Good. How are you? I'm talking to me again. I'm talking to you. Okay, you guys, we're just going to take a second and share this so that other people can find us. So give us a quickie moment. A quick, a quick second. Hi. Okay, give me one. I'm slow today. I, Chrome is not working for me. So, what are we talking about today, Marnie? To hide or not to hide? That is. To hide. Sorry, I've got an echo going on. It's I'm hearing it in two places. So. Oh yeah, because you have to close the window that maybe there was another window popped up. <laughs> okay, we're just having technical difficulties here. <laughs> okay. Are we good? We're good. Okay, that's better. So what we're talking about today, to hide or not to hide? Yes. Yes, that is the question. <laughs> <laughs> that is the question. Well, I think this topic came up a couple weeks ago. Um, and I know that I started really asking for something really different when it comes to what I was being in the world. And I started asking to be and to, to see where I was functioning from, to see what my agendas were, and to live fully exposed. Yeah. I was seeing all these places in my life where I was willing to be, I was like, I was willing to be vulnerable up to a certain point. And then there was all of the secret hidden stuff underneath there that I wasn't even allowing myself to see. And yeah. so I remember you and I were just chatting about that and something similar was going on for you. So yeah. And it has been two weeks. <laughs> and it has been two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> and we don't have um, CRS. Can't remember shit. It does happen <laughs> <in> a while. <laughs> like every day. Yeah. yeah. But no, similar sort of thing. And what I was noticing that I do a lot is it's almost like the, the energy of, okay, I'm here. I'm here. See me. See me. Oh, never mind. I'm not here. Don't see me. Don't see me. Oh, yeah. I'm here. See me. See me. No, no, no. Go away. Don't see me. Don't see me. And so, like this sort of like ping pong of, yes, I'm willing to be seen. And then no, I'm not willing to be seen. And just looking at what, like, when I make the choice to sort of go underground or, or undercover or want to shrink back or want to hide, like what's actually going on. And one of the things that I noticed is that there's this stupid fantasy idea that if I'm going to be seen, then I've got to have my shit together. If I'm going to be seen, then it needs to be the places where I've worked it out. Sort of like you said, the, the vulnerability piece. And then I really started looking at, see, I'm going to cry now. What if I was willing to like drop the barriers and be seen in the places where I don't have my shit together, where I have tons of questions, have no idea how something's going to turn out. Something is actually not working for me. I'd like to have it change, whatever that thing might be to be willing to be seen like all of the time. Cause it's, it's like the, one of the demands I have for myself this year is to be here. Like no matter what's going on, who's in front of me, whatever situation is in front of me, whatever's occurring to just be here with it. Well, that requires me to be willing to be seen in any state that I come in, not just in the ones where I feel like I've got my stuff together. So yeah. That. Yeah. 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 Well, <laughs> I, a little less, uh, <laughs> I went to Toastmasters this week and yeah. I've been really just, I have just, I get into these phases where I get really achy with dissatisfaction where I know that I need, hi, Catherine, by the way, hi, you guys, all the, you're alive. Um, I just get really, really dissatisfied with like the, the, whatever's going on in my life. And one of the things that I've been wanting to add to my life is public speaking, but I've been talking about it instead of choosing it. And so yeah. on Monday, I really chose it. And it, it's a really, it's a cool format. Like it's a humanoid format. Like they move, they have two to three minute segments and everybody that's in charge of a segment gets to get up and practice their speaking and, and so it's, it's a little bit structured, but it's structured to a purpose, right? So everybody can have a moment in the sun and really like, you know, get up in front of people. And, and I, I found myself doing this thing that I don't think I realized how much I've done, which is that, oh, this is easy. Like, you know, I, I don't have to actually choose it. It's just, I just know that it's easy for me and that's all I need to know. Yeah. And um, there was a section in the, and, and basically everybody had a role. So I didn't, there was no threat of me needing to get up until this one section in the meeting where they, um, opened it up for extemporaneous speaking, which is they give you a topic and you start speaking. 
And I, my body wanted to go up and I was like, you know what, we're going to wait this week and just watch. And so I watched and I, and every topic they gave, I had something for it, but I could feel myself on the edge, um, on the, on walking on the rail where on one side I was going to choose, choose it. And on the other side, I was going to like not show up again and, and just get that I could do this and that's easy. Yeah. And um, there was this, there was this place inside of me that showed up where that I've seen show up again and again and again, whether, no matter who I was working for or what I was doing in my life, where I would get to the, it, it was like getting to the edge of something where on the other side of it was more of me, but I wasn't, I didn't, I hadn't ever really been willing to go past that. And um, so I made a choice as I walked out that week that I was going to come back and I was actually going to choose Toastmasters until I didn't choose it anymore. And, and the choosing was going to be like choosing every role, every, cause every role had different amounts of time up in front and every role had different things. And, and you do, you get evaluated for, you get evaluated for your ums, your ahs, your, you knows, your right. likes, your filler words and all that stuff. Yeah. None of which I've been willing to subject myself to. <laughs> yeah, Totally. <laughs> Yeah, let and, me stand up and let you scrutinize everything that comes out of my mouth and tell me how I did. Yeah, and it it was good to watch how they did it because they really did do it in a way that was constructive. It turned out yeah. to be pretty constructive. Like it wasn't to tear people down; it was to go, "Hey, this was really awesome, and maybe this is something you could improve on." And uh, most everybody was interesting point of view. It was really yeah. cool. So, yeah. but yeah, like that for me but was. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, just go. I'm just chilling. So, well, it's, it's interesting. Cause I brought up the piece about not wanting to be seen or vulnerable with the places that we don't have it together, but there's also this side of not wanting to be seen or be too brilliant. So like the things that you, cause you said, I just do this. It's easy for me. So I just don't choose it. So how often is the not wanting to be seen actually where we're really shine at something. It's really fun. And it's almost like, you know, it's that whole Marianne Williamson poem of, you know, what we fear the most is, is not our, our weakness. It's, it's our greatness. It's our brilliance. And so, you know, would we be willing to be as brilliant as we truly be and as exposed and vulnerable as we can choose to be all at the same time? It's like this whole, whole thing of both, both of those kind of sides of it. Yeah. And, and that's, I'm glad you said that. Cause I mean, when I was I had, I went through a massive change when I was in Australia in December and I was like face to face with the same place where I'd gotten yeah. to that edge of that discomfort. And I'd actually backed off and I was like, no, I'm done. Like, I'm going to move on to something else. And so the whole month I was like nose to nose with me, not wanting to actually be as great as I am. Yeah. And I haven't known how to really change that. I've just been asking about it. I'm like, okay, so what is it to be the greatness of me? What is it to receive how wonderful I truly am? I've just been, you know, asking and Toastmasters comes into the mix and it's that same energy of like, not of really wanting to back off of going, okay, I've got enough information and now I'm going to go. And I was like, no, this time we're going to choose something else. Yeah. And so it's going to be cool to see what actually shows up. Cause I do know, like when I walked into the room, I was like, I'm shinier, like I'm shiny. And I have this, you know, when I stood up to introduce myself, I was like, you know, why are you here? And I'm like, well, I do online videos and I just want to start speaking in the real world. And every, like I had three people come up to me after you do online videos. Are you on YouTube? Like there was just this interest in yeah. what I'm creating in the world, which I realize is really different. Like there aren't a lot of people that actually get out there and create like that. And so, yeah, so like, so this is going to be interesting to see. Yeah, what, what shows, shows up. Yeah. yeah, the willingness to be seen in the brilliance of you. Yeah. How about it? And I, yeah, yeah go ahead. You, you go. Well, I was going to say the other thing that I've been looking at is how, how we hide our capacities from ourselves in the most amazing ways. Like we're so good at taking what we are brilliant and great at and hiding it in such a story or such a thing that's so awful and horrible that we just don't know how to fix and get out of. And, and then it's like, when you actually take a step back and start to ask questions, you go, oh, I actually have a capacity that I've just been dynamically hiding from myself. And an example, I was actually talking to somebody and she was just going on and on, you know, about like the, her, her weight and her body and on how unhappy she was with it. And just, you know, all of this judgment stuff. And I just looked at her and I go, is that really a thing? Is that really a thing? And she goes, no, 
but I've been telling myself this story for years. And I said, yeah. so do you actually have a capacity with bodies? Do you actually have a capacity with the judgments people put on their bodies? Are you actually a facilitator of that? And do you have really a lot of gifts and, and abilities in that area? And she just starts laughing. But what we started to look at, and then the conversation like, you know, went from there, but is how often when we've got a story, we tell ourselves over and over and over again, it's like, take a step back and go, huh, what capacity am I hiding from myself in that awesome, brilliant, wonderful story? What brilliance do I have that I have so masterfully hidden from myself in that story? And then being willing to go, ha ha, aren't I cute? And <laughs> would I be willing to, again, bring that capacity out of hiding and actually acknowledge it and allow myself to have and be it? Yeah, it's, it's, I'm wondering for myself and just for people that are watching, like, if, oh gosh, it's like this topic's normally talked about in the sense of like, I'm not showing up in my life and I'd right. like to show up in my life and I don't want to hide anymore. And as, a, as sort of like framed from the wrongness point of view of like, I'm hiding yeah. and that's wrong and I want to just change the thing that's wrong. But what I'm really wondering about, especially as we're talking now is like, I wonder if the thing that we're hiding is what, because the thing is like, well, what if I show up in front of people and I really fuck up? Or what if I yeah. show up in front of people and I'm terrible? But the, yeah. I think, I wonder if what the thing we're afraid of or tell ourselves we're afraid of is what if mm -hmm. I show up and I'm better than everybody? Like, right? what if I'm really good at it. Yeah. yeah. What if I'm yeah. actually really great at this? Or what if I'm not really great at it initially, but I have this capacity for something else that's going to show right. up when I do it that I do really don't want to see yeah. Like, yeah, that seems more likely. Yeah. I think there's a lot of facets to it. Like there's two and, but totally the, yeah. yeah, yeah. How much, and I wonder how much is it not actually about hiding from anyone else? It's about hiding from ourselves. And yeah. if we had total honoring of ourselves and total vulnerability with ourselves and trust with ourselves and, and just allowance of ourselves, what would there be to hide? And if we weren't hiding from us, then would we really be hiding to anyone else or will we just be here? Yeah. 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 There was this other thing that was showing up for me where I just, I secretly just knew that I was a terrible person. Right. <laughs> Even with yeah. all the tools, yeah. it's just like totally. you know, and beyond terrible, actually, like beyond that into like murderous, heinous, like there was this. Right? But just no, like deep sense of knowing that I was actually very dangerous mm -hmm. and um, destroy and, the world kind of dangerous, right? Oh, yeah, over and yeah. over and over, like, <laughs> Many times. Skin, like, but but worse right. than that, you know, like if you yeah. could imagine put Pol, Pol, Pol Pot and Hitler and <laughs> all those people together, and then you have right. what I actually am. And yeah. um, I had to really get really present with that because that was something you know, I had I had a facilitator ask me, um a really kind of poignant question because you know we're access consciousness facilitators and she's like you know if if um if gary and dane which are the founders if they disappeared like would you would you trust yourself with access you know if you were if, if the if the creation of consciousness on the planet were on your shoulders you know would you trust yourself and i said no i don't mm -hmm. and i that for me was this to hide or not to hide anymore because that was like something that i wasn't yeah. willing to know about me i wasn't willing to know that i didn't trust myself and i didn't want anybody else to know that they couldn't trust me but i kept creating this sense that you know in the people that were closest to me that they couldn't trust me i kept creating this thing that i didn't want to look at that mm -hmm. and and what i started to see was like any time that i hide a judgment about me then it, re it starts showing up in the people around me. Like they start acting weird or they start being different or, and right. I, I can't figure out what's going on. Cause I'm like, what I'm, am I being weird? Are they being weird? You know? And that's why I was like, that's why I actually asked this person, I'm like, can you give me a little more information? Cause I see you doing that too around me. And I know it's something I'm being. And that's when right. we started looking underneath what, you know, yeah. is it just that I'm being weird or is it, am I hiding something? And I was like, mm -hmm. I was hiding this, this deep sense of, really intense wrongness yeah and um yeah and being willing to look at that and be as wrong as I'm afraid that I like being willing to just play with being that has yeah. taken off a lot of the charge and also taken off a lot of that places where I was hiding yeah and, and it's being, funny because it is what you said it's when we're dynamically trying to hide something and it is usually the thing we've judged about ourselves that's just awful that we don't want anybody to know it's like like a magnifying glass where everybody sees it while we're trying I'm to go hiding something right here. <laughs> I know. 
<laughs> there's nothing there. Look away. And they're, they're like, like um, this is yeah. not the thing you're looking <laughs> for. Not, you're looking over here. You're not looking <laughs> over here. And it is, it just comes bouncing back to you because it's so energetically up when you're trying to hide it. So it's like the freedom and the space is being willing to look at all of it with no point of view and go, yeah, okay. Yeah, sometimes I am that. And I, that's a piece I get with when we do choose to hide and, and to hide or at least to make ourselves small is what other people are going to judge us as. So what if we were willing to be judged as horrible or brilliant or whatever somebody wants to attach to their judgment? What if we were just willing to be judged as whatever it is? How much more space and freedom would there be? But yeah. I had a question. Yeah. So, you know, we all have those moments where you know when you're shrinking, you know, when you're going underground, either like yourself or just trying to cover up a particular thing. So what tools do you reach for when you feel that contracting space to choose to just be, be here? Yeah. I've been face to face with that a lot through my life. I would say I use choice as a tool. Yeah. <laughs> when I, there's, there's a lot of, there's plenty, there's a lot of times when I've gone into feeling contracted where I've just cho chosen to leave the situation and I'll make up a story yeah. about it. You know, I'll be like, well, mm -hmm. this just isn't working for me anymore. Or this is uncomfortable or it's just not fun or yeah. There's been other times when I've like, like, like Monday, when I was at the Toastmasters meeting where I was getting, feeling that uncomfortable thing again. And yeah. next week I'm going to go into that meeting and I'm going to choose to get up and, and um, I, I, a lot of times when I, when I know, when I know that I'm ready to choose to get over it, I choose into it. I choose into the discomfort yeah. and I put myself in the uncomfortable situation. And that is true for me, even in relationships, because there's like John and I have had a really rocky couple of weeks where we've been really nutting out some, some things in our relationship that, that we've either been really unconscious about or really haven't wanted to look at. And it's just time to look at them and it hasn't been comfortable. Mm -hmm. And, um, so even in those places, I've, I've the moments where I want to like shrink back and just let it be or, you know, sweep it under the carpet. I've just been like, okay, no, let's, let's actually choose the other thing. You know, yeah. what's another choice that I could make? Yes. Using tools. And sometimes I use tools like interesting point of view. I have this point of view and, but every single time that my life expands, it's because I took that moment where it was uncomfortable and I, I dove into it. Yeah. And yeah. I don't know a way around that. <laughs> it, it, it's a choice. It, it makes me think of the movie Sing. Yeah, uh, totally. Uh, the elephant character, and she's terrified. She's got this most amazing voice, and you know, but she's terrified to get up and use it in front of people. And um, the cute little, um, the little pig, the little oh, actually no, no, the koala no. bear, the little koala bear, the like the the theater owner. I forgot. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Mr. Well, Moon, Mr. Mr. Moon, Moon, and the elephant. But yes, but he says to her. But, you know, she's afraid to start singing, but he goes, but then once you start singing, you won't be afraid to start singing because you'll be singing, right. you know, and it, it's sort of that it's that thing where whatever it is, we, we have decided we can't do. It is what you just said, choosing into it. And then once you're doing it, you're doing it. Yeah. And there, yeah, there is no other way around choice. And it's so funny because I love to get up and talk in front of people. I do. And then there will be this thing though, where some will have something to go speak at or, Hey, go do an announcement about this. Or could you do a little quick plug for this? And I'll feel my whole self, yep. you know, and I'm like, what the fuck? Like, I actually love doing that, but I will go to this. I want to be invisible. I want to disappear. I want to contract and go away sort of space. And you know, yes, sometimes it is who does this belong to aware of other people's points of view. That's the scary thing. And sometimes I don't know, there's just a, there's just a, like a contraction in my world and it is okay, choose. And every time I've chosen into it, it's always opened up way more space. Yeah. And I would say the other tool that I use, I really got from right voice for you classes, um, which is a specialty class in access, but is pushing down all my barriers and pulling energy from everybody. That was when I was at, I had a couple, I had a two 10 second increments where I stood up in front of everybody in the Toastmasters group. And it's, I don't really go to a lot of outside things. I'm pretty much either at home or I'm in an access class or in the grocery right. store. So, you know, there was like 50, 50 people in the room and we were introducing ourselves. And I, I literally, when I knew it was going to be my time, I pushed down all my energetic barriers, which is sort of a weird thing. Cause it's not something you cognitively do, but it's something you can play with. It's like, okay, I'm going to yeah. put my barriers up. 
and I'm going to push them down and I'm going to put them up and I'm going to push them down. And then you start to get a sense of what it is like when they're down. Yes. And I started pulling, I just asked to pull energy from everybody in the room. And that, that helps me with what I'm aware of. Cause that was something that I started to get was part of the discomfort is like the instant I'm getting up to get, give an announcement or, you know, possibly getting up to speak was like, I would have all of this instant flood of awareness of everybody's universe, of all of the possible judgment of all of the possible futures, like all of this awareness that was like instantaneously at the moment that I needed to choose, which seems sort of bad timing yeah. <laughs> in a sense, but then also like this free energy, like flood through my body. And, um, I've been a performer in some respect for most of my life in small ways, you know, I've, I've played the piano and I've gotten up to sing in, in groups and, and it was the same thing. It was like this, like yeah. instant, like flood of energy into my body. And one of the things that I, I got from one of the right voice classes, like, is like, what if that's the energy required to actually make that choice and get up where we've misidentified and misapplied it as fear yeah. uh, or anxiety or yeah. fr freaked out or whatever that is actually required to, to move your body and get it into that place where it can engage all these people, or it can actually deliver the energy required in front of all these people to do the thing. Um, and yeah. same with doing videos. Like what if that's the energy required to be what's required on the video? And so I've stopped making it wrong, mostly just out of practice, like yeah. just continuing yeah. to, to choose into it and not letting that stop me anymore. Um, and where I'm really playing with that same sensation now is more in my personal life, like more in my personal interactions. Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. Just that's yeah. a little less performing and a little more vulnerability and yes. a lot more vulnerability actually. Yeah. 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 Especially when you're like choosing to be with people and do away with any separation, any distance, anything that keeps us comfortable that we normally sort of keep a certain amount of space between us and somebody else. I know I've been really looking at that in my life. It's like, where's the, yes, you can come this close, but don't come any closer. Yeah. And then what would it take to actually not have any walls or barriers and no separation and no distance. And it's an interesting space. Like what's been showing up is really a lot of awareness of how skilled I've been at maintaining. It's like the, the two-step where there's this much distance always between every, every step, every turn, I'll just, you stay there, I'll stay here. We're still, we're pretty close, but we're going to keep this little space and really going, you know what, that's separation and separation doesn't actually work for me. And I'd really like to choose something else. And wow, the, the awareness of how skillful I have been at keeping the distance and the uncomfortableness of losing the distance and being willing to just go, okay. Like, hi, here I am. <laughs> Everything's what so now? <laughs> what now? Like, what? that's exactly it. Like, I mean, my, I live with people that use access consciousness tools and John and I are really creating a relationship with those tools. And I can't tell you how many times I've said to any of them, like I am in new territory where I have never oh. been. Like, I don't know how to create relationship with no distance. I know yeah. how to do distance really well. Really good. <laughs> I'm really good at it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and this is it. I think when I look at that energy, like the thing I've been avoiding is actually not knowing, like I've been avoiding, not knowing I've been avoiding feeling like feeling yeah. vulnerable or yeah. um, really having to function from question. Cause it's like, okay, so what is possible? What would we like to create? What can this look like um, that we've never chosen before? We've never been before. We've never even played with before. And there's a lot of, I don't know in there. I mean, there's a lot of just being willing to be present with having no cognitive control and totally, totally flying on the wings of your awareness and the willingness to choose and create. Yeah. And that is the beyond this reality that Gary talks about all the time that we talk about all the time. And, and it's just such a different way to live. Like, yeah. Yeah. And it, it really is like, and I know the word presence gets way overused. Be present, be present. And what that means, and you want to you wanna hurl, <laughs> at least I do. But there is, I don't, I'm not sure what other word to use. There is this, it requires me to show up, be present, walls down every moment. I can't pre-plan anything. I can't like orchestrate and control this. It, it's, it's literally, it's literally choosing every 10 seconds to just like, 
high with whatever's in front of me. And wow. It's like the, to capture into words, the energy of that space. I mean, I want to cry and laugh and scream all at the same time. It's like getting the invitation and the spaciousness and the joyfulness and that everything that I'm asking for that it is. And also going, I've never done this before, at least not for a lot of lifetimes. So I don't have any <laughs> recollection of how this is. It's such a new space and such a vulnerable space. And yeah. So it's a mixture of a whole lot of, a lot of things. Yeah. And I think if I were going to leave like everybody watching, like all of you, thank you guys for watching. Like if I were going to leave you with, I don't know if I could leave you with just one tool, but it really like what I've been looking at is we've really been changing comfortable distance and access right now. And I've been really running clearing loops, you know, destroying and then creating the comfortable distance between me and everything, which has really been changing this dynamically. Um, and giving me access to me in a really different way. And I guess one of the questions you could use is like, if I weren't creating comfortable distance, what could I choose? Um, am I creating comfortable distance, getting an awareness of, you know, where you might be doing that in your personal relationships or where you might be doing that even between you and what you'd like to be doing, what you'd like to be creating in the world. Am I creating a distance between me and what I'd like to be creating in the world? And if I am, if I weren't choosing that and I were creating something else, what would I choose? That's what I would start to play yeah. with. I love that. Yeah. I would, I would say the same. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Totally what she said. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah. I, just, I, I think about um, when my 16 year old was four and he was bouncing on the bed, you know, just jumping, jumping, jumping. He's like, mom, look at me, look at me, watch me, watch me. And I, I remember sitting there watching him and going, isn't, you know, so funny that all kids do that. They all are totally okay with being seen until they're not. As they get older, that sometimes changes, but they actually demand it. They actually like call for it. They actually request it. And there's no point of view if you bounce on the bed and you do a cool flip or you fall off and you get hurt. There's no point of view about what whoever's watching is going to respond or react. It's just see me, see me, watch me, here I am. So I just wonder if we played in that space of hey, see me, see me, watch yeah. me, here I am. And if I fall, I, it's okay that you saw. And if I did something really amazing and brilliant, it's okay that you saw. And there's just, I'm just going to choose to be and play and totally okay to be seen in whatever space. I love Do that. Different thing. Yeah. Cool. I adore you. I adore you back. Thank you. I always yeah. love this. I'm glad we did it again. Me too. <laughs> you guys, we're going to keep doing this every week. And Marty and I are going to start facilitating together too. So keep an eye on the Access website if you want to take a class with us. We're going to start creating a lot more together and you're invited. And so. I'm very excited about it. I'm so excited. I know that the two of us will have fun. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Crystal. And everyone for watching. Yeah, we'll see you guys next week. Bye.